All right, what's up, brothers and sisters in Christ? Uh, I want to do something a little different today. Um, I feel like God's leading me to do uh, something a little different today. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, why I believe in eternal security and why I don't believe that uh, if you're a born-again Christian and you have the Spirit of God dwelling inside of you, like the Bible says, know ye not that your body is the temple for the Holy Ghost. Okay, so why I believe that once you're born again and you have the Holy Spirit, that you cannot lose your salvation. And I want to give a testimony um, uh, on how I used to actually believe and I actually used to preach against eternal security. I mean, I was very... Uh, very uh, adamant about that you had to and I know a lot of people uh, use the verse that that you have to endure and they that endure unto the end the same shall be saved and a lot of people use that verse and I'll talk about uh, different verses that people use uh, and I used to use uh, to preach against eternal security that we can lose our salvation but over the years I've been saved about um, five years almost five years now uh four four and a half five years uh, what the lord has shown me and how i've completely uh the opposite now i don't believe that i can lose my salvation i believe that the lord keeps me and i believe the lord chastens those whom he loves um, and I'll talk about the verses that, that I used to use, uh, and I was ignorant, in my ignorance, I would use to try to justify why I believed that we had to keep our salvation, and why I believed that, uh, uh, why I used to believe that I could lose my salvation. But in this video, I want to talk about some, why I believe in eternal security. And I want the focus of this video, brethren, and just bear with me. Uh, it might be a little bit longer than my other videos. I don't claim to be, you know, perfect. I don't claim to know everything. I'm not coming to you, you know, in, 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 in enticing words uh, of man's wisdom. But I come to you in, in the Word of God. And I just want to let Scripture define Scripture. And I just want, and I believe it's plain. And uh, I believe in eternal security, and it wasn't until I understood this doctrine right here. Because remember, the Bible says they want to endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap together teachers having itching ears, okay? So that's why sound doctrine is so important. And until I understood the doctrine of justification, I didn't understand salvation completely, okay? Because once you understand and grasp how you're justified with God and how we are, have our justification then you'll understand then you'll start to understand that salvation is of the lord and that the lord keeps us and that never will i leave thee nor forsake thee and that he chastens you if you get out of line if you sin if you transgress god will chasten you as he does with all his children okay but that's key and i want to talk about that in this video and i've i've written down a couple of verses and uh if you have your Bibles, uh, uh, open up to Acts. We're, I'm just going to start with a, a verse just to get the tone set. Acts 13, verse 39. Let me bring this a little bit closer. Acts 13, verse 39. Okay, and it says, uh, I'll start in 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him... All that believe are justified. There's that justified, that justification. And this is talking about Jesus Christ. And by Him, by Christ, all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. So he's saying by Christ we are justified, not by the law of Moses. It's through faith in Jesus Christ. That's what it talks about in Ephesians. By faith through grace that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast okay so next i want to go to galatians galatians uh let's start in chapter 2 galatians chapter 2 galatians chapter 2 let's 
go to Galatians chapter 2. And let's go to verse 16. I wrote down verse 16. Okay. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by what? The faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. So he talks about the same thing he was talking about in Acts. You're not justified by the works of the law, by the law of Moses, by what you do. You're justified by faith in Jesus Christ. By faith in Him, by faith in His Word, by faith in His blood, my friend. And go to Galatians chapter 3. And uh, Galatians is a great book. Anybody who uh, is, is, is trusting in themselves or trusting in what they do uh, uh, to keep their salvation, they need to really pray upon and read the book of Galatians. Because that's really where God started to show me... Uh, uh, this doctrine that I'm teaching you right now is in the book of Galatians. All right, I'm just going to read Galatians 3, 1 through 14. So uh, just read along with me if you would. Okay, chapter 3, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you? This only what I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Remember, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, Doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify, there's that justify again, would justify the heathen, and that's us before Christ. We are heathen. We are the Gentiles. But we are grafted in by Christ in that seed to whom the promise was made. Once we're in Christ, we are saints. We are saints in Jesus Christ. We are grafted in. We are made righteous by the, the blood of Jesus Christ. So be before Christ, we are heathen. We were just like the people in darkness of this world. But God, He brought us out of darkness and into light by his grace hallelujah thank you jesus seeing that he would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful abraham for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the, the promise of the Spirit through faith. So hallelujah, he's saying the same thing. He's saying that we didn't receive the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, by anything we did, by any the works of the law, the law of Moses, it's by faith, by the hearing of faith. You believe the Word of God. You heard the Word of God. You heard the Gospel preached. And you believed it. You believed it. And that's how you receive the Spirit, is by the hearing of faith. And you're not made perfect by the, by the works of the law. It's by the Spirit, my friend. That's why we have to walk in the Spirit. Okay, that's the book of Galatians. Now I want to go to uh, uh, Romans 3.20. Romans 3.20. 
and this is gonna be a little bit of a longer video, but bear with me. This is a very important doctrine, and uh, I just don't wanna rush through it, and I don't like it when I'm rushed. I just kinda of wanna, I wanna just let the Spirit speak right now. Romans 3.20. Romans 3.20, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. So by the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So the law is a schoolmaster, like the Bible says, to bring us unto Christ. It shows us we are sinners that need a Savior. Okay? But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified. Being justified freely by His grace. Freely by His grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier, the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. And he goes on to say, where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works, nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Without the deeds of the law. This is our justification. And if you continue to read in Romans 3.31, he says, Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yeah, we establish the law. So you don't turn the grace of God into a license to sin. But that's talking about sanctification, my friend. That's a process that the Spirit, He purges us, He chastens us, and He molds us, and He makes us more like Him, that inner man, day by day. And we crucify our flesh, and we look to Him, and we become more like Him, day by day, my friend. That's not justification. You're justified by faith through grace, and God began that good work in you, and if God began it, He's going to complete it. Hallelujah. He's the author and finisher of our faith. All right, now go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, and I'm going to start at verse 8, and we're going to read through uh, verse 11. Okay, uh, for, but God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, so while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified, and here's that word again, justified. By what? What are we justified? By his blood. Being justified by his blood. Romans chapter 5 verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. That's the atonement, my friend. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. You're justified by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Believe it, my friend. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Have faith in the blood that he shed for you. It's living. The blood of Jesus Christ is eternal. It is living. And you can access the throne of grace boldly through Jesus Christ, through faith in his blood. You, through, through faith in his blood, you can access the holiest of holies through Jesus Christ. And that's a blessed thing, my friend. We got to become humble like little children and we have to, unless you're converted and become like little children, you can't receive the kingdom of God. All right, so now I want to go to Ephesians and I want that to be the highlight of it too, the blood, the blood, because a lot of people want to take out the blood. These other virgins, and I'm going to talk about that in uh, uh, some more of my videos in the King Jesus virgins, they take out the blood, okay, and they replace it. And that's important because that's how we're justified. As I just read to you, we're justified by his blood, by faith in his blood. So let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 6 through 7. Ephesians 1, 6 through 7. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. So how are we accepted in the beloved, in Jesus Christ? In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Hallelujah. Alright, chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. 
Ephesians 2.13 but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You're made nigh by the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. All right, Colossians 1.14. Colossians 1.14. Colossians 1.14. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sin. So that's how we have redemption. That's the atonement. That's our justification. Is the precious, spotless, sinless, pure, and holy blood of Jesus Christ that he shed for you, my friend. That he shed his blood for you. He was crucified. He was nailed upon a cross. He was spit upon. He was mocked for you, my friend. He who knew no sin became sin for you and I. He is our righteousness. He is the atonement. And he is our justification. Believe it, my friend. All right, I want to uh, go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's see. Verse 14. Let's start there and go to, uh, well, yeah, 10, 14. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering of sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. That's how we have boldness, by the blood of Jesus. That's the new covenant. He said, uh, uh, take and drink, for this is, is the blood of the new covenant. For It's my blood that I have shed for you. Okay, that's the new covenant, the blood that Jesus Christ shed for you. Have faith in his blood. That's our justification. Now I want to go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. 1 Peter. 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, let's start at verse 18 says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, because it's precious, my friend, the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's how we're redeemed, with the precious blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Okay, and these are the last two. I want to go to Revelation 1.5. Revelation 1.5. It says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He has washed us from our sins in his own blood. So the song, the beautiful song, I actually just made a song. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The song, that's a beautiful song because it's true. It's scripturally based. There is nothing that can wash away your sins but the blood of Jesus Christ. By faith in the, the blood of Jesus Christ. He has washed us unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, 5, 9. Go to Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So there it is again. He has redeemed us to God by his blood, by thy blood. So my friend, I know that's a little bit of, it's about 20 minutes. But uh, this video, this is the foundation. It says, no other foundation can be laid than that which has already been laid, Jesus Christ. That is the foundation. And if you do not build upon that foundation, unless the Lord build the house, the labor is built in vain. Unless you are building upon that foundation, that chief cornerstone of Jesus Christ, that you are saved by faith through grace in the blood of Jesus Christ, by faith in him, the just shall live by faith, you are laboring in vain. That's why when they say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name? Did we not cast out devils in thy name? Did we not do many marvelous works in thy name? He'll say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Okay? These people 
who are self-righteous and they are trusting in themselves to keep their salvation. They are putting the focus on them and they're having confidence in the flesh. The Apostle Paul said, having no confidence in the flesh. Jesus Christ said, I'm the vine, ye are the branches. Abide in me, and my words abide in you. You will bring forth much fruit. He said, apart from me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing apart from Jesus Christ. You can do nothing apart from the Word of God, from the King James Bible, from His Word. He is one with His Word. You must abide in Him, my friend. That's where the fruit comes from. That's where the power comes from. That's where the power it says having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. People deny the power. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind, not by might nor by strength, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. You can't do it apart from Jesus, my friend. You can't do it apart from his word. If you continue in his word, Jesus said, you shall be my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You can't do it apart from him, my friend. And justification, that's that foundation. You are justified, not by anything you do. And you don't keep yourself justified. God keeps you. God keeps you, my friend. If you go astray, just like Jonah did. Jonah tried to run away from the will of God. And God sent the storm. God sent the waves. And God chastened him. And that's what God does to his children. He chastens us. If we could lose our salvation, then what's the point of Hebrews chapter 12? What's the point of the chastening of the Lord? No, he's, he chastens us so we can be made partakers in his holiness. Hallelujah. So my friend, I humbly come to you and I say, I used to believe that I could lose my salvation. But the book of Jonah says salvation is of the Lord. Either salvation is of the Lord or salvation is of you. Who is it of? The word of God says salvation is of the Lord. And it wasn't until I understood the doctrine of justification that I understood eternal security. I understand there's people who take that doctrine. That's why it says, by them shall the truth be evil spoken of. Okay? A lot of people want to take the grace, that foundation of grace through faith. And the Bible even says they're going to do that. They, they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness, into a license to sin. The Apostle Paul says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? If you're a true born-again Christian, you're not going to want to sin. You're not going to want to disobey God. You are going to want to follow God. You are going to be broken over your sin. If you sin, you're going to be broken over your sin. You're not going to make excuses for your sin. You're not going to make provision for your flesh. But you understand that I'm not justified. Just like Jesus said. He said, after you have done all these things commanded unto you, say, we are but unprofitable servants. Only doing that which was our duty to do. Only doing that which we were commanded to do. And we are to have that same mindset. That we are unprofitable servants. We're not worthy. But he's worthy. We're only doing what we're commanded to do. What's our duty to do? So that's, our, that, that's, that's, a, that's a key thing that I just want. I wanted to plant that seed. Because uh, it's so important my friend. And uh. As I said, I believe in eternal security because I believe in justification. I believe that I'm justified by faith in his blood. So how can I lose my salvation by something I do if I'm saved and justified by something he does, by something he did? It's not by what I do, it's by what Jesus Christ did for me. That's justification. And I'm going to talk about sanctification in, uh, in, in my future videos and... Uh, and how God expects us, and God not only expects us to, but he commands us to be ye holy, for I am holy. And that's called sanctification, and that's how we live that life of sanctification through his spirit. And he purges us, and he, and he molds us to become more like him. But this video, I just wanted to uh, plant that seed, and uh, you're justified by, by Christ alone, by faith in his blood. So believe it, my friend, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Call upon his name. If you're not saved, call upon the name of the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. And call upon his name, my friend. Say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You have to lay that foundation, my friend, that you are a sinner. God is holy, holy, holy. And you have transgressed against his law. And your righteousness is as filthy rags before a holy God. And the only one who can redeem you, who can justify you, is the Lord Jesus Christ. He shed his blood for you. Call upon his name, my friend. You may not have another day.